Who. Book One, The Cat Who Could Read Backwards. Chapter Two. It was Quillian's first day on the job at the Daily Fluxen. He moved into one of the pea green desks in the feature department and got himself a supply of yellow pencils. He noticed that the pea green type telephone was stenciled with the official reminder, be nice to people. He tried the pea green typewriter by poking out, the time of many murders is after midnight. Then he telephoned the Fluxton garage and to request a staff car for the trip to Lost Lake Hills. To reach the fashionable expert 15 miles beyond the city limits, Quillian drove through com complacent suburbs and past winter brown farms patched with snow. He had plenty of time to think up think about this interview with Cal Halpoy, and he wondered if the Quillian method would still work. In the old days, he had been famous for a brotherly approach that put interviewees at ease. It was composed of two parts sympathy, two parts professional courtesy, and one part low blood pressure, and had won confidence from old ladies, juvenile delinquents, delinquents pretty girls, and college professors and crooks. Nevertheless, he felt qualms about the help play assignment. It had been a long time since he had done an interview, and artists were not his specialty. He suspected they spoke a secret language. On the other hand, Halpey was an advertising executive, and he might hand over a minimograph release prepared by his public relations office. Quillian's mustache shuddered. It had always been the newsman's habit to compose the opening paragraph of his story in advance. It never worked, but he did it as a limbering up exercise. Now, on the road to Lost Lake Hills, he made a few starts at the Hal Pay story. William thought he might say, When Cal Hal Pay leaves his plush executive suite at the end of the day, he forgets the cutthroat competition of the advertising rat race and finds relaxation in... No, that was trite. He tried again. The, a multimillionaire advertising man with a beautiful wife, 34, 22, 32, and two swimming pools, one filled with champagne, according to legend, admits he lives a double life. In painting portraits of children, he escapes. No, that was sensationalism. William recalled his brief employment with a news magazine and made another attempt in the crunchy style favored by that publication. With an ascot folded at the throat line of his custom-made Italian silk sports shirt and a handsome, the handsome green six-foot-two czar of the advertising empire spends his spare time, William guessed that a man of how plays accomplishments must be that tall, that gray, and that impressive. He would probably have a winner tan as well. With a blue forward ascot accentuating his Caribbean tan. Lost Lake Road ended abruptly at the massive iron gate, a massive iron gate set in a field stone that looked impregnable and expensive. Quillian braked and the car Break the car and glanced around for signs of a caretaker. Almost immediately, a recorded voice coming from the gate post said pleasantly, Please face the pylon on your right and announce your name clearly. He rolled down the car window and said, William from the Daily Fluxion. Thank you, murmured the gate post. The gate swung open and the newsman drove into the estate, following the road that a road that meandered through a tall stand of pines. It ended in a severely landscaped winter garden, all pev pebbles, boulders, and evergreens, with, with arched bridges crossing a small frozen pond. In this setting, bleak but picturesque, stood a rambling house. It was contemporary in style, with gently curving roof lines and opaque glass walls that looked like rice paper. 
William revised his opening line about the Italian sports shirt. Hal Pay probably knocked around his million dollar pagoda in a silk kimono. At the entrance door, which appeared to be carved out of ivory, William found something that resembled a doorbell and reached towards it. But before his finger touched the button, the surrounding panel glowed and with a blue-green light and chimes could be heard indoors. There, these were followed by the bark of a dog, or two, or three. There was a sharp command and a moment of silent obedience and a, brisk, and a briskly open door. Good morning, I'm Quillian from the Daily Fluxton, the newsman said to a curly-haired, pink-faced youth in a sweatshirt and dungarees. And before he could add, is your father here, the young man said amiably, come in, sir. Here's your passport. He handed over a fuzzy snapshot of a heavily mustached face peering anxiously from the window of a car. That's me, Quillian said in astonishment, taking it at the gate before you drove in, said the young man. The young man said with an obvious delight, it's spooky, isn't it? Here, let me take your top coat. I hope you don't mind the dogs. They're sort of friendly. They love visitors. This one is the mother. She's four years old. The pups are from her last letter. Do you like blue terriers? Quillian said, I, everyone wants Yorkies these days, but I like the Kerry Blues. They've got beautiful coats, haven't they? Do you ha did you have any trouble finding the place? We have a cat too, but she's pregnant and she sleeps all the time. I think it's going to snow. I hope so. The skiing has been lousy this year. Quillian, who prided himself on conducting interviews without making notes, was taking mental inventory of the house. White marbled foyer with fish pool and tropical tree probably 14 feet high. Skylight two stories overhead. Sunken living room carpeted with something like white raccoon. Fireplace and shiny black wall. Probably onyx. He noticed that the boy had a hole in his sleeve and was padding around in sweat socks. The flow of chatter had not ceased. Would you like to sit in the living room, Mr. Quillian, or do you want to go right to the studio? It's more comfortable in the studio if you don't mind the smell. Some people are allergic to turpentine. Would you like a Coke or something? Allergies are funny. I'm allergic to crustaceans. That burns me up because I'm crazy about lobster. Quillian waited for a chance to say, is your father home, when the young man said, my secretary tells me you want to do a story on my paintings. Let's go into my studio. Do you want to ask questions or shall I just talk? Quillian gulped and said, Frankly, I was expecting you to be much older. I'm a boy wonder, says Hal Play, without smiling. I made my first million before I was 21, and 29 now. I seem to have a genius for making money. Do you believe in genius? It's spooky, Billy. Here's a picture of me when I was married. My wife looks oriental, doesn't she? She's taking, out taking an art lesson this morning. But you'll meet her at, after lunch. We designed the house to go with her looks. Would you like some coffee? I'll stir up the housekeeper if you want coffee. Let's face it, I look boyish, and I always will. There's a bar in the studio if you'd rather have a drink. The studio had a paintly aroma, a good deal of clutter, and one vast wall of glass overlooking a white frozen lake. How play thick flipped a switch and a flimsy shade unfolded from the ceiling to screen out the glare. He touched another control and the doors and doors glided open to reveal a bigger liquor supply than the press club had on its back bar. Quillian said he preferred coffee, so Halpley pressed a button and gave the order to a brass grill mounted on the wall. He also handed Quillian an odd-shaped bottle from the bar. This is a liquor I brought back from South America, he said. You can't buy it here. Take it home with you. How do you like the view from, the win from this window? Sensational, isn't it? That's the man... That's a man-made lake. The landscaping alone cost me half a million. Do you want a donut with your coffee? These are my paintings on the wall. Do you like them? The studio wall was covered with fraying canvases, portraits of small boys and girls with curly hair and cheeks like red apples. Everywhere Quillian looked, there were red apples. Pick one out, pick out a painting, said Halpe, and take it home with you. Compliments to the artist. The large one sell for $500. Take a big one. Do you have any kids? We have two girls. That's their picture on the studio cabinet. Cindy is eight and Susan is six. Quillian studied the photograph of Hal Play's daughters. Like their mother, they had almond eyes and classically straight hair. And he said, how come you paint nothing but children with curly hair, hair and rosy cheeks? 
you should go to the Valentine's Day Ball on Saturday night. We're having a we have a we're having a great jazz combo. Do you know about the ball? It's the annual Valentine's party at the art club. We're all going in costume representing famous lovers. Would you like to go? You don't have to dress up if masquerading doesn't appeal to you. It's twenty dollars a couple. Here, let me get you a pair of tickets. I'm getting back to your paintings, Quillian said. I'm curious to know why you specialize in kids. Why not landscapes? I think you should write up the ball in your column, said Halpoy. It's the biggest event of the year at the club. I'm chairman, and my wife's very photogenic. Do you like art? Everyone in the art field will be there. Including George Bonfield Mount Clemens III, I suppose, said Quillian, in a tone intended to be jocular. Without any change in his expressionless delivery, Halpoy said, That fraud? If that fraud shows up, shows his face in the outer lobby of the club, they'd throw him out. I hope he isn't a close friend of yours. I have no use for that character. He doesn't know anything about art, but he poses an authority, and your paper lets him crucify established artists, letting him corrupt the entire art atmosphere of the city. They should get smart and unload him. I'm new on this beat, said Quillian, and Halpoy stopped as Halpoy stopped for a breath. I'm no expert. Just to prove what a fraud your critic is, he builds up Zoe, Lam Zoe Lamberth as a great artist. Did you ever see her stuff? It's a hoax. You go and see her paintings in the Lamberth Gallery, and you'll see what I mean. No reputable gallery would accept her work, so she had to marry an art dealer. There are tricks in all trades. As for her husband, he's nothing but a bookkeeper who got into the art racket, and I do mean racket. Here comes Tom with your coffee. A houseboy dressed in a solid chino and chinos and half button shirt appeared with a tray, which he banged down on the table with a lack of grace. He gave Quillian an unfriendly stare. Halpoy said, I wonder if we ought to have sandwiches with this. It's almost lunchtime. What do you want to know about my work? Go ahead and ask some questions. Do you want to make notes? I'd like to know, said Quillian, why do you specialize in painting children? The artist lapsed into thoughtful silence, his first silence, his first since Quillian arrived. Then he said, Zoe Lambert seems to have a this, have this big connection with Mount Clemens. It would be interesting to know how she manages it. I would make a few guesses, not for publication. Why don't you dig up, dig into the situation? You might come up with a juicy expose and get Mount Clemens fired. Then you could be the art critic. I don't want, Quillian began. If your paper isn't doesn't clean up that mess and clean up soon, they're going to start feeling it where it hurts. I wouldn't mind a hot dog with this coffee. Do you want a hot dog? It was five thirty that afternoon. At five thirty that afternoon, Quillian fled to the warm, varnished security of the press club where he had agreed to meet Arch Riker. Arch wanted a quick drink on the way home, and Quill wanted an explanation. He told Bruno Cartley, tomato juice on the rocks, no lime, no Worcestershire sauce, no Tabasco. To Arch, he said, thanks, pal. Thanks for that welcome celebration. What do you mean? Was that an intermission initiation gag? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about that assignment to interview Cal Halpoy. Was that a practical joke? You couldn't have been serious. The guy's a nut. Arch said, well, you know how artists are. Individualists. What happened? Nothing happened. Nothing I could possibly use in a story. It took six hours to find, and it took six hours to find it out. Halpoy lives in this rambling house about the size of a junior high school. Only it's sort of Japanese, and it's wired to do all kinds of tricks. The inside is wild. There's one wall made of glass rods hanging like icicles. They move when you walk past and sound like a xylophone in need of tuning. Well, why not? He's got the dough to spend. He's got dough. He's got to spend his dough somehow. I know, but wait till I finish. There's all this expensive staging set, and then out comes Cal Halpoy, padding around in stocking feet and wearing sweat a sweatshirt with a hole in the elbow, and he looks about fifteen years old. Yes, I've heard about his youthful look. He's youthful looking for a millionaire. Arch said. That's another thing. He keeps boasting about his money and trying to force presents on you. I had to fight off cigars, liquor, a $500 painting, a frozen turkey from his ranch in Oregon, and a carry blue puppy. After lunch, his wife showed up, and I was afraid his generosity would extend to bounds of posterity. Incidentally, Miss Halpoy is quite a dish. You're making me envious. What do you have? What did you have for lunch? Ostrich tongues? Hot dogs. Served by a houseboy with the charm of a gorilla. 
you had a free lunch. What are you griping about? How I'll play. He won't answer questions. He refuses. Arch asked in surprise. He ignores them. You can't pin him down. He wanders from progressive jazz to primitive mess he collected in Peru to pregnant cats. I had more luck communicating with the gatepost than with the boy, that boy wonder. Did you get anything at all? I saw his paintings, of course, and I found out about a blast at the art club is giving on Saturday night. I think I might go. What did you think of his paintings? They're slightly monotonous. All those red apple cheeks. But I made a discovery. In all those pictures of kids, Gal Halplace painting, is painting himself. I think he's enchanted with his own looks. Curly hair, pink complexion. Art said, I agree this isn't going to make the kind of story the boss wants. It sounds like the Arabian Nights. Do we have to run a story? You saw the color in the memo. Pink. William massaged his mustache. After a while, he said, the only time I got a direct answer to a question was when I mentioned George Bonfide, Bonfield Monk Clements. Arch put down his drink. What did Hal Play say? He exploded in a controlled sort of way. Basically, he says Mark Clemens isn't qualified to judge art. That figures, Hal Play had a one-man show about a year ago, and our critic roasted him alive. The readers loved it. It cheered their black hearts to know that a successful money man could be a failure at something, but it was a bitter blow to Hal Pei. He discovered his money could buy anything but a good art review. I wait for him. What about the other newspaper? Did they criticize his his work too? They don't have a critic. Just a nice old lady who reporter who covers the art openings and gushes about everything. They play it safe. Quillian said, so how plays a bad sport? Yes, and you don't know how bad, said Arch, pulling his bar so close to Quillian's. Ever since that episode, he's been take, trying to bankrupt the Flux. He withdrew a lot of advertising lineage and switched over to the other paper. That hurts, especially since he controls most of the food and fashion advertising in town. He's even trying to turn the other ad men against the Flux. It's serious. Quill, Quillian grimaced in disbelief, and I'm supposed to write a story to butter up that skunk so the advertising department can get the lineage back again. Frankly, it would help. It would take the heat off. I don't like it. Don't go fat. Don't go fascist on me. Archie pleaded, just write a folksy, a folky piece about an interesting guy who wears old clothes around the house, takes his shoes off, keeps cats and dogs, eat, eats wieners for lunch. You know how to do it. I don't like it. I'm not asking you to lie. Just be selective, that's all. Skip the part about the glass icicles and the half million dollar lake and the visits to South America and bear down on the turkey farm and his lovely wife and the adorable kitties. Quillian brooded over it. I suppose that's called practical newspapering. It helps pay the bills. I don't like it, Quillian said. But if you're in a bad, in that bad a bind, I'll see what I can do. He raised his tomato juice glass. How play or to help pay? Don't be cute. I had a hard day. I'd like to read some Mount Clemens reviews. Have you gotten around? On file in the library, Arch said. I want to see what he wrote about the artist, an artist named Zoe Lamberth. Halpoy hinted at a shady connection between Ms. Lambert and Mark Clement. Know anything about that? I just process his copy. I don't peek under his window shades, said Arch as he gave Quillian a good night slap on the back.